Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today we are reviewing featured entries from the November Art Dare, which was to create fingerprint artwork. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We asked people to create artwork in any media they wanted using prints from any part of your hand. Very exciting project that I think got a lot of people to do experimentation and particularly to loosen up and let go of the process. The first artist we're going to look at today is Nikki Stittler. Sorry if I said that wrong. And Nikki says, I love finger painting, wet and dry, smudgy and clear, watery and opaque, which gave me different types of marks and textures. This is such a beautiful piece that has an incredible amount of movement. And I know this is an abstract piece, but my feeling looking at it is that it very much has a sense of landscape and it also has a beautiful feeling of atmosphere. We've actually been getting a lot of people asking about abstract art and how to go about doing it. And yes, we will cover that at some point in a stream. But I think what you're seeing in Nikki's piece that for me is exciting is different levels of engagement. For example, there's a lot of activity in the middle of the piece. The colors are really saturated. The paint is very thick and very smeary. But do you guys see how important the upper left-hand corner is? That's an area of the painting that you might not even look at because it's just not as exciting as what's happening in the middle. But you need areas like that to balance out what's happening in the rest of the piece. I also like how certain sections have more of a bite to them. Like I love this little blob of white and then other sections like this that get a little bit muddier. So there's a really nice balance of a broad range of different types of strokes in Nikki's piece, very exciting. By the way, tell me in the chat, did any of you guys here participate in this art dare, even if you're not featured in the video? And actually, this is terrific. We have Ryan Nesbitt here with us in the chat. And Ryan, we're going to look at your work right now. <laughs> and Gargi is saying, Ryan, this is so beautiful. Yeah, so let's take a look at what Ryan did for this. And Ryan says that they're a 15-year-old student. They're in high school. And they are used to working in colored pencil with everything being so nice and seamless. And Ryan says they thought that the art there would be a challenging experience for that reason. That's great because absolutely, these art dares are an opportunity for you guys to experiment on a short-term basis because you know you only have one month to do it. And so a lot of people find that the art dares, they're a really great opportunity to take a vacation from your usual artistic self. And we definitely see that, Ryan, in this piece. Ryan says in their statement, I try to embrace the messiness of the paint, use all of my hand to paint it from my palm and thumb for the background to my pinky for little dots of detail. And they explain, since my life has been pretty hectic lately, I thought honing in on things that would make me happy and calm, like this image of a landscape of lily pads. Yeah, I included a lot of these close-ups because especially looking at these on a phone or something, you miss out on a lot of the subtleties in here. And Ryan, I just love the glow that's happening in your piece. A big part of that, is that pink. Do you guys see how the vast majority of the pond, it's mostly blue, but there are these beautiful layers of pink that you can see through the blue. Really nice work run with the transparency and then little things like the frog that we're seeing here in the lower left. It's a little bit hidden, but I like that. It takes some time for us to really recognize. And so to me, that's a level engagement with the artwork that really gets us to engage with it 
on a closer, more sustained basis. So beautiful work in this piece. I think that it definitely has a very peaceful, very tranquil feeling to it. And you are working in the transparency. I'm always talking to people, especially painters, about the importance of transparency, because I think oftentimes with painting, people are very good at painting opaquely because it's the more obvious route. But I think, Ryan, your piece is all about the transparency. And that's really why it's such a luminous piece. Cool. We have a lot of people in here who did the dare who are not in the video, but that's okay because we still love participation. Tom G says this was a fun and challenging dare. And Marijke, I'm sorry, I know I'm not saying your name right. I participated. It inspired me to experiment with mediums in ways I didn't try before. It was an interesting experience. Yeah, and it's a low commitment situation because it's not like you're committing to something that's gonna last four months. It's really cool. And Joshua says they didn't do this one. Definitely try the next one. You better, Joshua. <laughs> We're gonna hold you to that statement, I believe. Okay, the next artist we have is Tia Ong. They are from Malaysia, and the title of this piece is Filter. Tia explains that it's an image of a guy who's obsessed with beauty. He doesn't want his fans to see his imperfections, so he always covers himself with a lot of makeup and is always taking photos with a filter. And Tia explains he was happy with the situation. He just wants to show his real side. He realized that it all doesn't matter and that he shows his real side as long as he's happy. So this is such an interesting piece because I do think that because of the nature of the thumbprint, it's not really exactly the most detailed way to work. In fact, it's really hard <laughs> to do detail with thumbprints, which is one of the reasons why people loosened up so much. And so I was really surprised that Tia was able to get so much detail and to get a face that was so well articulated. But it's a really nice exploration especially I think some of the areas like the hand that get looser and less recognizable, say compared to the eyes, which are very recognizable. I really like this detail here because the background really starts to engage with the hand so that the edge of the hand is not so clear. And then also, if you guys look really carefully at the face, there's little touches of blue and even the cheek a little bit of a pass of the pink. And I love that Tia did that because I think if the face didn't have any blue or pink in it, probably it would not look very cohesive. And then it would feel like an image where it's just a backdrop. And then you have the person on top and there's not much of a relationship here. And so Tia, I think the choice to integrate those blues and those reds into the skin tone was really, really smart. John Murph says, looks like BTS. I think it is because I think when I saw Tia's Instagram post, I think I did see that. I don't know anything about BTS. They all look the same to me. I'm sorry, <laughs> BTS fans. My daughter's really into BTS. I've actually never listened to them at all. I should because I know there are a lot of people that are huge <laughs> BTS fans. So anyway. All right, let's take a look at the next artist. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, Ashis. Ashis? I'm sorry, I can't say anybody's name. Um, Ashis created three pieces. And so this first piece we're looking at is titled Bull Run. And I guess, Ashis, you've been doing a lot of animal gestures from the December Art Dare back in 2019. That was a long time ago. And so this is an old painting that Ashis gessoed over on watercolor paper and then they finger painted over it. I love that so much because I was never an artist who used to go back and work on old pieces, try to resurrect them or make them better. But Lauren Welch and I had this wonderful conversation about old work. And she said that because it's old work, you should feel free to cannibalize it. And I thought, I love that idea. <laughs> and so actually lately, I have been going back and repurposing old pieces. 
And sometimes you come up with something that you really don't anticipate. And so Ashis describes all the rubbing led to some interesting texture from underneath to show through. Yeah, the layering and oh guys, that little section of red, I'm going to guess that that's a cape, but it looks like fire, doesn't it? It has this atmospheric quality and the way that it sinks into the background is beautiful and oh, the texture in here. Gorgeous. I love the text. I mean, I'm a big texture fan, so I'm not that tough to please in terms of texture, but texture is not easy to do. I think a lot of people are sometimes intimidated by texture, so it can be tricky. And you guys can see here up close, you can actually see what I believe are some of the gesso strokes and then the paint going on top of that. We have the next piece, which is called Flower Pot. And this is the first piece that they created. And they say that it loosened them up so that they would feel less scared and precious about the painting. And that's a huge thing, you guys, because I do think that a lot of us, myself included, we tend to fear loosening up or trying something different because we're worried we're going to lose the piece. And the thing is, yeah, that's a little terrifying, especially if you've worked on a piece for a really long time. But I think if you don't let yourself let go of a piece, unfortunately, you end up missing out on a lot of creative opportunities. And so this idea of feeling less scared and precious, huge. And you guys, this is beautiful. Do you see that red? It's really intense. It's so thick. You can see the scraping and the transitions and oh my goodness, it's such a luscious painting. I just love this. And this is a cool comment from Com Cuke saying it's interesting that a lot of these don't look finger painted. And I think that's a great thing because I think people have certain expectations about what they think charcoal will look like or what a painting will look like. And same thing with finger painting. People have that type of expectation, but people really defied those stereotypes of the material. All right, now this third piece by Ashis, it's called My Brother's Wedding. And this is a photo with family members and actually Ashis is in here, <laughs> which is really cool. And they explain that they'd always loved the color in the photo without getting into the detail was their goal for creating this piece. And so finger painting actually was a really good choice because you really can't do a lot of detail. And they really wanted to bring out the color. And I love the color. Again, it's that red. Oh, geez, you're so good at the red. The red ties it all together. In fact, I think this week later on, Jordan and I are doing a stream about what makes a strong 2D composition. And one of the things that we're going to talk about is trying to get the eye to move around the page. And it's that cohesion, Ashis, that you're getting with the red that makes me move around it. But then you also have warm and cool contrast because the flesh tones in the face are warm, but then the background is very cool. And so I love that. Oh, cool, you're in the chat. Wonderful. And they are saying so honored by all of your comments. Yeah, and I think what's really cool, you guys, is people are so supportive here that people are not just coming in, saying their piece and leaving. You guys are really a supportive community and that's extremely unusual. Yes, Tom G saying, I'm enjoying the boldness of Ashish's work and Seven Angelic says some impressive texture going on. I would keep at this, Ashish, because you're onto something here and I just think that if you keep developing this, it could be very exciting. Okay, oh, and here's a detail. Look at that, that flesh, oh, it's beautiful. I just, I could look at this all day. There's so many textures for me to get into. All right, the next artist we're going to look at was inspired by Chuck Close's work, who we're seeing here. And these are literally the fingerprint pieces that we looked at when I announced the art dare. And also we have these prints. A lot of these are aquatints. Some of them are also ink drawings by the British contemporary artist, Norman Ackrod. And so this artist, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Noor Unihar Malik, who is from Pakistan. 
And so if you guys look at Norman Ackrod's use of textures and washes, I think you guys will see that Nora did such an amazing job really taking from Norman Ackrod using the fingerprint technique and really making it work for them. I love this piece. The range is incredible. And oh my God, that seahorse in the upper left-hand corner. It's so good. I mean, I've seen people do that before. You, you know, when you put your hand like this and you print it and then you put three, five little dots and it becomes a little baby foot. Like I've seen that a billion times, but I definitely have never seen a seahorse. And I think it's like seaweed in the middle. The range of marks here is really extraordinary. Beautiful work going on. And wow, Nor was productive. Nor did so many pieces and they're all different and they all explore a different quality and technique that's going on in the pieces. And so Nor explains that what they did actually for these pieces and a couple more that are coming up is they cut out cartridge paper to make stencils for these pieces, but obviously this one did not use the stencil. So Nora really played with many different types of techniques. Oh, cool. And Nora is here with us in the chat. Wow, I pronounced it right. Oh my God, that is really shocking. <laughs> yeah, and Ryan's saying, really interesting to look at and absorb all the details. And Maya says, I love the seahorse too. These are pieces that it's like, you gotta take time to appreciate them. You, you will start to notice things that you did not see in the beginning. And I think it's so wonderful, Nor, how you added these little pieces of text, because you know something, a lot of times, and you guys have probably heard us get on people for making text that doesn't integrate well with the text. I love the text because it's so tiny. And so when it gets in there, you can read it, but from a distance, you don't notice it right away. And I think those are really well integrated. Text is not easy to put together with an image. You did a great job. Yeah, and then this one, I don't know if this, to me it looks like butternut squash. Maybe it's a gourd, I don't know. It's something like that. I love the playfulness of this. And also, Nora, where you overlap the stencils, like the two at the top that go on top of each other, that has a lot of depth to it that I really enjoy. And so here, you guys, these are the stencils that Nor created. They cut it out and then did the fingerprinting on top. And so this way, they were able to really repeat all the different patterns, have them overlap on top of each other. What a brilliant way to, I think, really control the shape. Because with fingerprinting, it's hard to get that nice, crisp edge. I mean, it's pretty much impossible. And so the stencil, I think, was just so brilliant with what is going on in here. This is really cool. John Murphy is saying it's like an archeologist's findings. I see what you're saying there. I mean, a lot of these definitely almost have a historical feel to them. I know that they're not necessarily supposed to be that way, but definitely the shape of the vase, it's unusual, I think, compared to what you would typically see today. Oh, okay, so Nor is confirming. Cool, it is a butternut squash, awesome. I love butternut squash, but oh, it's such a pain to cut. <laughs> okay, the next artist we're going to look at is Mel Smith. And by the way, all of the artists who are in this video, their names and their Instagrams are in the video description below. So if you guys wanna follow any of them, that's all available. And also in the video description below, you will find the link to the November Art Dare on artprof.org. And if you guys wanna read all the statements and see the images, you can definitely go to that page and check that out. Okay, let's see what Mel says about their piece. These are acrylic paintings and wow, wonderful to get up close and see the depth, like that shadow that's on the right-hand side. Oh my goodness, so many colors that are going on. It's fantastic. So this was Mel's first art dare. Awesome, we love it when people do their first art dare. Tell me in the chat, how many people here have done an art dare? Not necessarily this one, but one in the past. 
Maybe you've done a whole bunch of them. Maybe you've never done one in a case. Let's do some of that peer pressure <laughs> to get people involved, which is really cool. And so Mel explains that they really liked the idea of finger printing, finger painting, and they love doing portraits. So we have these two portraits here, and one of them, I believe, is done from a photo, and another one, I believe, is done from life. And this is funny because Mel Smith says, I am probably not a typical user as I am 72 years old. You know what, Mel? <laughs> I kind of doubt that you're alone because in our community, we have people of all ages. I mean, I've gotten emails from people who say, hi, I'm 83. I just picked this up. I got an email, I think a year ago, it's from a parent and they said, my daughter's 11 and she loves your videos. I was like, that's incredible. So yes, I, I don't think you're alone, Mel. We, we definitely have multiple generations going on in here. So let's take a look at this one because I think you guys can see up close. These are so lovely because they still get across the idea of a portrait. You're not going to miss that because sometimes people, they try to do a portrait and then it's like there's not enough recognizable forms for people to really understand that. But I love how it's so loose and it's so impressionistic, but we still have eye sockets. I'm sorry. The anatomy nerded me, just couldn't resist. And then the experimentation and the use of the wide of the page inside the face, beautifully done. Yeah, like this is wonderful. Lisa H is saying, I get a real sense of person in Mel's portraits. And let's see, Ryan says, super gorgeous pieces. And Com Cuke says, these portraits have so much life to them. Yeah, so much of this is in that mark that has that energy and that breathing that you feel from the pieces. I think sometimes portraits don't work so well because they almost feel too static and plastic. And none of us are like that. I mean, we're all moving around all the time. And let's see, we have another comment here that is from Margie and they are saying, you are not alone, Mel. See, told you, you are so not alone in this community. Okay, the next artist we're going to look at is Dara. And they said that they tried recreating the CMYK printing process with their thumb prints. <laughs> and so what you're looking at here is highlighter pens, which I would never have thought to do that. In fact, I would sort of think that highlighter pens are not strong enough, but whoa, you proved me wrong, <laughs> Dara. So I love the choice of the highlighters and oh my God, that neon yellow is just like, wow, so powerful. So these are self portraits and Dara explains in their process that they use their fingers to pull up the charcoal pencil and also actually a needed eraser to pull the charcoal pencil up. Um, actually, let me show you the charcoal pencil one because I was just, this is the charcoal pencil one. So if you guys look at this, you can see the evolution of the piece, the pulling out of the form. And this is the charcoal pencil. Okay, let me go back to over here. And so they say that it was really difficult using only my palms. And I realized I used it like a transfer stamp because I really like having control over everything. And Dara, I just love that you included these process images of your hand in there because <laughs> we can see that you didn't do it the typical way. Because I think a lot of people, they put the material on their finger or hand and then they press it on top. I mean, that that's a very, Great, good way to do it because you get great results. But do you guys see how Dara like drew the face on and then printed it? I, I just think that's so brilliant. I mean, finger painting, it's not really the type of thing that a lot of us feel that we have control over, but you definitely found a way around that, which is really, really cool. Dara is with us live in the chat. Awesome. And I got your name right. Thank you. I know because you corrected me that one time. So I'm really trying hard to remember what everybody's name actually is, but it's difficult. <laughs> Tom G is saying, I've done a few art dares. It's always a unique and enriching experience, both with the medium and the interaction with other art prof peeps. Yeah. If you guys didn't know this, we are, we do have in the art prof discord, a whole channel that's completely dedicated to the art dares. And I know people really enjoy it because 
you can post works in progress. You can ask questions. Hey, is this idea a good one? Or I'm thinking about this. Here are a couple sketches. Because that's the type of thing, I get the sense that a lot of people don't like to do that on social media because it feels more public. So what I really like about the Discord is that you have an opportunity to share your work with people without feeling judged the way a lot of people do feel on social media. And I know a lot of you guys have done so well helping each other out and thinking about what to do next. So if you guys are thinking about doing the next Art Dare, join us in the Discord because that's a facet of the Art Dare experience that I think has just really taken on a life of its own, which is awesome. So this is so cool to see the development. And, and Dar, I love how you put the marker on top of each page because you know something, the first two stages, you don't have a lot of contrast because both of the colors are so light in terms of value, but it's like, oh my God, it just pops at the very end. And so this to me is such a great example that you can be thinking towards something. Maybe it doesn't look incredible in the beginning, but it's like, Dara, once you put in that dark color, it just really pops. In fact, one of my favorite parts of this, Dara, is actually the shirt. The shirt is really cool. And a lot of people would think, oh, it's a portrait, look at the face. And yes, the face has a lot of personality. I love it. But the clothing is something that a lot of people tend to really skip. And I think you took advantage of that because of the pink that is showing through the blue. So really nice work in that area. Okay, so the next artist we're going to look at is Katharina Crummel. And Katharina did several pieces. They explained that in the process, they were experimenting with fingerprints on non-absorbent surfaces. And so what Katharina ended up using was plastic lids. So cool. And the thing is, I love this experimentation with surfaces because honestly, I don't think people think to do that as much. I think it's more likely that somebody will think about, oh, I'm going to try this cool thing with brushes and palette knives. But to paint on plastic lids is so cool. And I think it's great that Katharina points out that they're non-absorbent surfaces because if you put your fingerprint on paper, the paper absorbs it. But if you do it on a plastic lid, that completely changes things. And so Katharina explains that these are multi-layered, quote, touch collages. So the first couple pieces, they're based on backlit images. And if you guys go to Katharina's Instagram, I believe she did post a couple images of holding the light up to the plastic lids. So if you guys look, there's like a little bit of a glow in the middle of this piece. So this is not just the fingerprint part, there's also lighting involved. And so Katharina explains, depending on the distance between the plates, shadows become visible and the depth of field changes. Now, there's a second series where they lit the plates from the front and they reduced the distances with the light, started working with a petroleum jelly plate, which acts as a sharpness masking layer. So cool. I love these. And it's so wonderful to see how totally different they are. Because I do think that sometimes when you have a really specific shape and one technique, a lot of people can feel after doing two or three, eh, I've done enough, <laughs> I don't need to do more. But you can see in these images, Katharina is really pushing the material and trying to figure out what can do. I mean, a lot of these to me really remind me of like looking at bacteria in a microscope. I think part of it is the round shape that we're looking at. But also a lot of the forms have a transparency. They also seem like school of fish. They're all swimming in the same direction. Yeah, like Ashish is saying, this has a Petri dish kind of feel to it, like a microscopic world. And Dara says, they look like specimen slides. Yeah, I, I just love that. Yeah, petroleum jelly. It's like, why, <laughs> why would you think of doing that? I just, I'm always so impressed when people use an unusual material. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Like, I always feel so boring with my paper and charcoal, but I, I just think this is gorgeous. Oh, cool. Katharina is with us in the chat. Thank you so much. And they're saying, yes, normally use the jelly for my dog spots. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The places 
you discover things. Sometimes it's something that's right in front of you that you're doing every single day. And it just happens to be something that works with what you're doing. Okay, so the next artist we're going to look at is Priya Amargi. And they are saying, I learned how to play with materials, get quote, a dirty, and throw caution to the wind through this art dare. And Priya explains two of the paintings are basically me cleaning my palette. I believe that's the ones later on. I'll come back to the other ones. I think it's this one. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's this one, Priya. I mean, I could be wrong. There's also this one as well. But yeah, paint's there. You know, you might as well do something with it. Let's go back to that image. And so Priya explains who knew I would do my tiny version of quote performance art and has helped me become more free with my art. We've been watching Priya create a lot of these pieces in the Discord. And these are such cool pieces because of, again, the experimentation of the material, because these are not just oil pastel drawings. They have oil goo. I think Priya, you said it was coconut oil. I can't remember. Maybe you can tell us in the chat because I did see your name at some point. There's also water soluble graphite powder, which I've never used before. And Priya has been making great use of our Flickr page in terms of this dead tree <laughs> that I saw in the Utah desert. <clears throat> and the range here is so lovely because do you guys see how the fingerprints in this image of the dog, the prints are really light and they're, they're soft and delicate and they feel very, very subtle. But then Priya, you also have, for example, images like this one, which are so fierce and so thick and substantial. I mean, I feel the weight of this tree and those clouds, I feel like I could grab them. So I think what I'm impressed by, Priya, is the way that you were able to get such different qualities out of the same material. Because look at this one, this image of the dog, barely there. I mean, this dog is almost like a ghost. And so what I see, Priya, that you did in these drawings is you really expanded your range. You showed us that you can be wild and thick and heavy the way you are in this one, but you're also able to be very quiet and delicate and subtle. And I just love that range because it's hard to do that. And I think that you'll find that those thick strokes are gonna help the subtle, delicate strokes. They're gonna balance each other out really, really beautifully. Seven Angelic says they're so soft and feeling such nice color. Also love the oil goo. Oh, okay, so Priya, great, you are live in the chat coconut oil and oil pastel. And Ryan says, I love the atmosphere in these. And Karen says, Priya, her dogs are legendary. Yeah, I know Priya, you've been working with these images of the dogs for quite some time. And wow, staying with that subject has really helped you. I know it's so much fun to bounce around and try different things. And I definitely encourage you guys to do that. But there is something to be said about just picking one subject, staying with it and seeing what you can do and where it can go. And I think Priya, we're seeing that, wow, you, you are on fire here in terms of really exploring this material. Okay, the next artist we're going to look at is Sarah Marie Malmrose. Sorry if I said your name wrong. They are from Norway. And Sarah explains that this is an exploration of prehistory through art. And this is a wonderful explanation. So Sarah says, using your fingers to apply pigment to your skin or rock is one of the oldest forms of human expression. And they say the art dare was a perfect opportunity to explore the theme of life in prehistoric times. It's awesome. I love this take on the art dare because it's true. I mean, like, you know, people didn't have eraser sticks <laughs> in the prehistoric times. They didn't have Windsor and Newton to back them up. And probably it was people digging their hands into things. So there is this gritty, raw quality that really is quite primitive. And I love, Sarah, that you really took note of that in your piece. 
So for example, Sarah says, certain pigments like charcoal were used to make cave paintings and are still available today, 30,000 years later. Yeah, that is amazing to think that, hmm, charcoal has been around for a while. <laughs> like ever since people had fire, we were able to use that as a drawing material. So the subject that Sarah explored structures and patterns you can find in nature on both a larger and smaller scale. Making these pieces, I imagined how beautiful the world must have been in the Paleolithic age. This is gorgeous. I mean, the exploration of marks is really phenomenal because you have marks like this that are really heavy handed and really cut to the chase. I mean, you could feel the gravity of these really, really well. But then there are also pieces like this one. I feel like something's percolating. Doesn't this feel like primordial soup? Something's growing and I don't know. It makes me think of that silly movie Evolution with David Duchovny where all these aliens go, man, it's just like got this feel to it. Like I definitely feel that this is a primitive story that I'm looking at. <clears throat> And Tom G, thank you so much for the super chat. We greatly appreciate your support. As you guys know, ArtProf is 100% free and we, we rely entirely on donations. So any amount you guys can help us keep this going is absolutely wonderful. Oh, it looks like Sarah is here with us in the chat. Very cool. I'm so happy that so many of you guys showed up for the stream. It's just so lovely when we have you guys here watching live. Yeah, and actually, you know what's cool is that Blue Wolf here is asking what is climbing chalk because actually that's one of the materials that Sarah used. And Sarah says climbing chalk is used for sports climbing. Guys, I love all this stuff. We've got coconut oil and petroleum jelly and we have climbing chalk. That is so cool, you guys. I mean, the experimentation is really phenomenal. Yeah, and C. Cantrell says, I love this landscape, reminding me of early Georgia O'Keeffe. And Carrie Ann says, love this one, molecules in action. And Maya says, it makes me feel like low tide at the beach, but the rocks are coming alive. And CSDR says, this is the mist between mountains and treetops. I think that's wonderful. So Sarah, what you're seeing here with these pieces is we have this raw primitive feeling and everybody is bringing their own version of interpretation going on. But I think you can see from the interpretations, it's definitely something that is rooted in nature. And I also have to say, Sarah, I love the, the little thin wash of that very, very light burnt sienna. I'm assuming that's the gouache that you say in the statement. And that makes a big difference because let's picture if this was just black and white, I don't think you would have that earthy, primitive quality. And it's minor. It's not like a bright burnt sienna that's heavy. It definitely takes a back seat to the charcoal, but I think it's really nicely balanced. All right, guys, you ready? We're going to announce who won the November art dare. Katharina, you won the honorable mention. So congratulations. We were really impressed with your experimentation, your use of the material. We think these are beautiful, lovely pieces. They, they almost feel like little jewels in a way. And they're very thoughtful and intimate. And we can tell not just from the work, but also from your statement, the amount of thought that was invested into these works. And it's a lovely series that you created. So nice job. We're very, very excited. Cool. All right, the prize winner, of the art there is Noor. Congratulations. We're so excited. I mean, Noor, you hit it out of the park. Not only did you make so much work, but every single piece was so inventive. You really pushed the material. You got it to do all kinds of things that we did not even anticipate. And we, we were just over the moon about what you invested into this piece. So. Really nice job, you guys. I mean, I, I'll have to tell you, I mean, I remember the days when art dares, I'd get like two submissions. <laughs> it's like, and we were just trying so hard to get people to participate. And now 
it's just so wonderful to see you guys bouncing off of each other, that, that you guys are really exchanging ideas. It's very, very exciting. I wanna give a shout out to Yana who says, happy holidays. I love these videos in the Discord community. Looking forward to seeing the art made in 2021. Thank you so much, Yana, for your support and for everybody participating in the Discord and posting on Instagram, because this is one of those things, you guys, these art dares, they, they need momentum and they don't work very well when everybody is by themselves doing their own thing. This to me is very similar to when I taught at RISD, I'm given an assignment and everybody would come in and show their stuff and you would get excited by each other's work. This is one of the best things about going to art school is getting to see what everybody else does and to exchange those ideas. So everybody, thank you so much for doing such a great job. Don't forget though, <laughs> we just have a couple more days to do the December art dare, which is to illustrate an idiom and check out in the discord because there are some cool things going on. I'm learning so many amazing things about different cultures. I mean, all the idioms about buffaloes from India, I was like, wow, <laughs> like I had no idea about this. It's really, really cool. Remember, if you want to enter the December art dare, just tag us on Instagram. Use hashtag ArtProfDare. If you don't have Instagram, we do have an upload form on the ArtDares page, which you can use, but we really prefer people to use Instagram. It's easier for us to keep track of things. Our prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And in a few minutes, I will be hanging out with you guys in the ArtProf Discord. Meet me in the post live streams channel. Subscribe to our channel and join the ArtProf family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make it possible for us to keep ArtProf 100% free and accessible to everybody. You guys, thank you so much for your participation, for supporting each other. It's a magical thing, you guys. Wow, people online supporting each other for a reason that is not about money. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.